is about taking chances, trying new things, having fun, making mistakes, and learning from it. A very good afternoon to all the guests and dignitaries. With great joy and immense excitation, I feel privileged to extend my warm welcome to all of you for today's workshop on references and citation organized by DG Zakshan. So I am Mandar Neve with my co-host Kanita Garg. Welcome you all on the behalf of DG Zakshan. So before I proceed, let me take a brief moment for the introduction of our organization. So DG Zakshan is an initiative of Sense Group, which has been developed. Content for over three hundred courses in multiple languages, which range from four hours to six months in various sectors of IT, BFSI retail, and entrepreneurship for all age groups from school children, youth, professionals, and senior citizens. DG Saksham has also conducted more than hundred webinars, ten FDPs, and workshops, six international conferences. DG Saksham. Has impacted more than fifteen thousand plus lives through various webinars, conferences, workshops, and seminars across the globe. The topic for today's workshop is references and citations, which is presented by Dr. Raja Sankaran sir. The term reference and citations are also often used to refer to the same thing, although a citation tends to mean the part of the text within your assignment where you acknowledge the source, whilst the reference usually refers to the full bibliographic information at the end. So everyone, please make sure you have downloaded the Mendeley software, and you all are here with the instruction that are given to you all for the workshop. So be ready with that to continue the session. Uh, I am profusely elated to take an opportunity to introduce our chief guest of the day, Dr. Raja Sankaran, who is a PhD from IIM Ranchi, is a professor in marketing management in a B school, ISME Bengaluru. He has over. 30 years of industry experience and teaching experience he has held management positions with multinational companies in service delivery roles before moving to academics in csc he was posted in the uk in the role of account lead and general manager he has implemented 3 six sigma projects resulting in account savings and improved service delivery for national grade uk account In NIIT, he has conducted hundred plus corporate trainings in enterprise management at thirty plus countries worldwide, including USA, Asia Pacific, African countries, and was posted later on in Australia. He has also conducted trainings at Microsoft, Dallas, USA, and Seoul, South Korea. He is a member of American Psychological Association. Also, he has published research papers in ABDC journals. Marketing intelligence and planning, Emerald and Taylor and Francis journals. He has been awarded best research paper winner for the research paper presented at Jamnalal Bajaj Institute of Management Studies, Mumbai, in International Research Conference. He has conducted various trainings and FDPs on workshop on reliability and validity, a guide to publishing research papers, managing references and citations, and many more. So the world is full of diamonds and gems, and we are having one of them here today to build this event. With this note, I would like to give my heartiest welcome to our guest speaker, Dr. Raja Sankaran, with a big round of applause. Uh, before going further, I request all the participants to remain mute throughout the workshop. And if you have any doubt, you can type in the chat box, or you can also raise your hand. Uh, and also, top five active participants will receive an appreciation certificate from DG Saksham. So, guys, be attentive throughout the workshop. So, over to you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the for the kind introduction and uh, namaskar to everyone. Let me share my screen. Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So. the prerequisites was shared with everyone and i'm i hope all participants have installed the mendeley desktop as well as the microsoft word plugin and created a user account in mendeley and installed the uh, the uh, chrome web in, uh, version as well if you have not done so the links have been shared with all of you please do so it hardly takes 10 minutes time in order to uh, do the installation the um, agenda for today would be to uh, i will first go through the briefing on referencing 
the focus would be primarily on api referencing style though as you are aware there are various referencing styles that we use whenever we submit to the journals we need to comply with those referencing style so as part of the workshop today i will focus with an example from apa or the american psychological association referencing style uh, the version 7 uh, with Mendeley, I will also show about how to change from one style to the other style easily with just a click of a button. We'll go through some of the concepts of what is the need of using a reference manager or an RMS, what Mendeley is all about. Installation and setup is something. Uh, can I please request everybody to be on mute? Um, the moderator, can you please mute everyone except me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Um, so the installation and setup, as I mentioned, uh, you, you should have already installed as part of the prerequisites of this workshop, the Mendeley desktop, Microsoft Word plugin, created a user account in Mendeley, as well as installed the web importer. So these are the four key things that we will go through as part of the... Please, please be muted, everyone. Okay. And then we will go through the interface of Mendeley. And uh, there are seven different approaches to create a library item in, in Mendeley. I will go through each one of them. Then how do you perform import and export as well as what a watch folder is. And we will also be looking into some from managing the different uh, library items in Mendeley. For example, how do you organize them? How do you check for duplicates? How do you sync them with the cloud version? How do we merge the documents? Then we will get into uh, inserting the citations. I will cover uh, both the type of citations, in-text and the end-text citation in Microsoft Word. Uh, so this will this will include about um, uh, narrative citation as well as the parenthetical citation of um, uh, of uh, it's basically based upon the style of the author in writing uh, the the particular sentence or a manuscript. So we will go through both of these. Um, uh, uh, so uh, then we'll go through how do we edit uh, citations as well as export the library. So this is the main agenda of what we have for today. For the next uh, three hours, I will give adequate time for the participants to ask questions. Uh, so you can raise your hand or uh, use the chat box in order to ask questions. Uh, whenever I have a logical break, I will I will give breaks multiple times in order to ask questions. So the very first um, point which comes to our mind is what is the importance of referencing? Why do we need uh, referencing and, and why, uh, why so much of emphasis is given? Now, uh, um, these are predominantly used by uh, research scholars, by uh, faculty members as part of um, you know, their, uh, uh, their regular uh, manuscripts and research papers that they submit to different journals, as well as for the, um, uh, 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 those who are doing, for example, post-graduation as part of their dissertations that they make use of referencing. So the importance of referencing is A, to maintain the international standards. There are specified way in which the references has to be uh, entered in and it has to be cited in. So we'll go through about what these are to obey the copyrights as well as the IPR. Now, the third point is very, very critical because in digital world, what we normally tend to do is do a copy and paste. This is something which is not uh, something supported as part of the academic writing. So we have to give due credit to the owner, both moral and ethical credit. Uh, we cannot simply use a sentence as it is based upon the way that it exists for we have to paraphrase it if we have adopted a particular scale, for example, or, uh, uh, or we have cited from some of the papers, we need to ensure that we have referenced it appropriately, and to gain attention in the research community. Now the question comes in is can all this be done manually? Of course, yes, but it requires a lot of typing. It's a mammoth task. Now, if I take an example of, if you need to submit a research paper uh, to a journal, again, it depends upon the type of research paper, the number of citations or the references will uh, increase. For example, if I write a, a, a manuscript and submit it to a, a good top journal, the expectation is around 100 to 150. 
if i'm writing an systematic literature review or a meta analysis the citations might still increase to uh, around 150 to 200 uh, if i submit my phd thesis it could span anything between 250 to 300 uh, references to be cited within the um, within the document so it does require a lot of task by the scholars hence uh, everything has to exactly match between what is cited versus what is given in the bibliography so there are a lot of typing involved it is a mammoth task so uh, it could also lead to mistakes for example what i talked about the citations with the referencing if uh, a, a particular work is cited but not included in the reference section or vice versa that could lead to immediate uh, desk rejection or if you submit it to your um, uh, your phd thesis uh, to the review board they might immediately reject it uh, looking in from the referencing stating that you have not done a good academic work similarly there could be lost references either within the bibliography or within any of the uh, the place where you have cited a particular reference in the manuscript uh, so it has to be looked into from the point of view of it can be done manually, but too much of mammoth task. Um, the focus of a research scholar should be on the research rather than on the citations. Hence, there, there is a lot of benefit by making use of a reference management software. The second thing is there are too many referencing styles. For example, what we talk about the APA uh, referencing style seven as of now, which was introduced in 2019. APA stands for American Psychological Association. Uh, in social sciences, predominantly, I come from the marketing and the management domain, we use APA style, but that's not, again, the only style which is being used for. When we submit a particular manuscript or a research paper to a, a journal, we have to comply with the requirements of that particular journal for the referencing style to be used. APA is one, Chicago is other, Harvard is the third, like this. There are multiple variants of each one of them as well. Similarly, in case of law, it uses uh, Blue Book. In case of medical, there are uh, medical and uh, uh, pharmacology. There are other referencing styles which are being used. So number of referencing styles are, are many. Now, when I submit my research paper to a particular journal, if it gets rejected at any different stage, for example, then I move on to submit to another journal. If it uses a different referencing style, I need to make a lot of changes. Hence, doing it manually again is a mammoth task. So we need to understand what these referencing styles are and how do we use a particular referencing style to comply with the requirement of a particular channel. And similarly, when you're submitting your, for example, your PhD thesis or your dissertation, you need to comply with the guidelines of what has been provided by the university. So it's very, very critical to follow that. Now, what happens if uh, a, a scholar or a student uses an incorrect referencing style versus a correct referencing style? So on the left hand side of this table, what I have listed down is if an incorrect or an inappropriate referencing style is used, what could be the implications? On the right hand side of this particular table, I have listed down about using the correct referencing style, what will it lead to? Okay. So if, if a scholar uses incorrect or an inappropriate referencing style, it, it, it portrays that the scholar has got an unclear thinking or an is quite lazy, lazy in terms of an intellect laziness or is simply ignorant of the fact that what should be the right referencing styles to be used. Or it could be that the scholar is unaware of the correct um, method to cite a particular paper in the manuscript. The third is mixing up of various referencing style in the dissertation thesis or research paper. Now, typically what this means about mixing up is, let me show you a quick demo. Okay, I hope everybody is familiar with Google Scholar. Okay, uh, if, if I go to Google Scholar, say I search for any of the uh, research papers, I find, for example, the very first one, um, I use this, okay, I find, okay, this, this particular research paper is something that I want to use for mobile payments as part of my study. So, so I, I review this, okay, this is from uh, a good uh, Elsevier journal, 
I review this, I say, okay, this is fine. Now, what some of the scholars also do is, if they find there are, you know, at the end of each of the research paper, there'll be citations. If you find that, okay, this particular study is something I should be using, I should be citing as well. So they could typically go here and then say, okay, I should, I, they would create a section as a references and, and copy this. Okay, so um, now what would be the drawback of this? If I, I go back into this and I, if I look for the APA citation, okay, now if you look into exactly the way that it should be cited for, there is a lot of difference between the two. Hence, we need to make sure that correct referencing style is used. I will cover in, in the next uh, few slides about what should be the style to be used. And if you see here, the way that it is cited um, versus the second one, it's totally different. Hence, we this is what is known as mixing up of different referencing styles within a document. This is something which should be avoided. So you should use only one specific referencing style that it should be used as part of the manuscript thesis or the research paper. Um, if incorrect referencing style is used, it's liable to be death rejected by the top journals. Um, so as soon as you submit, you, you the, the research paper is written back. That's what it means by the desk reject. If you use little or no citations, uh, it indicates that the scholar fails to demonstrate the writing as well as the thoughts clearly. And your thesis, your thesis guide will form an opinion of a non-scholarly writing. That means it is not academically correct and hence it could be rejected. Now, when you use the correct referencing style, what does it reflect? First, that you have been quite thorough and rigorous. That means you are providing now quality work of whatever research that you have done. It also shows and demonstrate your understanding about the topic of the research. Now, as individuals, we need to be credible. So with correct referencing, it actually builds each of us as individuals, um, as a scholar. Now, it's uh, the ability to synthesize knowledge by drawing appropriate ideas. Now, um, you all might be familiar with the um, uh, the section of literature review. So it comes in various forms. If it is a PhD thesis, it comes as a chapter. In case of a research paper, it will be a particular section on literature review. Similarly, in different other sections also, you will be citing and quoting them. So literature review is simply not saying what A said or what A did or what B did. You simply quote a particular one and no. It is something what you should look for is how do you synthesize this literature, build up on those ideas, build up on the on the knowledge, uh, and then draw your conclusion out of it. So this is again very very critical. So using correct referencing will also reflect that the scholar has got the ability to synthesize the knowledge. It uh, recognizes different points of view. It also authenticates the originality of the of the source. Uh, from where that you have actually um, cited them and the way that you have drawn your conclusions from. Again, it comes from various sections. For example, if you are doing the, uh, in a research paper, you have got a section uh, after you do your data, uh, data analysis, you come to uh, drawing inference. So when you say whether your hypothesis supported or not supported, you also given the rationale based upon the context of your study, why a particular hypothesis supported or not, and what similarity or differences do you find with other studies or extant studies in your domain, in your particular um, country or in other countries. So that gives in something by which you could a synthesize the knowledge as well as authenticate the originality of the resource. It also projects a high degree of maturity on the scholars and using the extant literature, it also leads up to your study, wherein you build up on the knowledge. With reference management tools, it helps scholars to create as well as manage their list of references. Now, what I talked about, if you are uh, writing your thesis, you might require around 250 to 300. Similarly, if you're writing some SLRs or you're submitting your manuscript to a top journal, the number of research papers that you have is quite large. Hence, it should be easy for scholars in order to manage them. Designate 
design it is also designed to organize citations into specific formats these are nothing but the difference different referencing styles that we use for uh, in order to prepare the manuscript as well as bibliographies it provides a way to download references into a reference management tool now what typically this means is um, we all have a habit of you know reading something some of the research papers once we have the access to it we download it at a, in a particular folder and then we could we could uh, you know scribble something read annotate do a lot of these things uh, or or write in a particular notepad uh, rather than doing all of this, all this could be done in one particular place in a reference management software. So I'll also go through about how do we do this. So rather than you know downloading it elsewhere and then looking forward to find this, everything can be organized with the reference management software. Um, before I dwell into further details, um, you all should be uh, familiar with the APA referencing style. I will briefly introduce about this as well as about how the references and the citations are used before I dwell into Mendeley. So I will give a very brief introduction with respect to this. Um, so now what we use for the APA, which is from American Psychological Association is the seventh edition, which was introduced in 2019. But again, you should always follow the rules of your particular university or the requirements as per the journal formats which are required for as i said there are various formats that exist for so in social sciences in management typically we make use of apa and uh, which is the seventh edition um there are specified rules if i may put it this way or the grammars or the syntax the way that the citation should happen for example if uh, um, if a, whenever you refer to a particular research paper to be cited in your manuscript whether it is single author whether there are two authors three authors or more than three authors also um, if you are citing the same author one publication or multiple publications if there are multiple publications within the same year or different years, so there are specified rules on how all this should be used. And any doubts that you have with respect to citing, um, uh, in spite of using the reference management software, always refer to the publication manual. Uh, this is the official publication manual of APA or the American Psychological Association seventh edition. This also provides the rules, for example, if we normally cite secondary data, uh, websites, the books, all for each one of them, there are specified formats that should be used in for. Okay. Uh, following, following now, the next is um, whenever we search for a particular research paper in, uh, in a publisher's website, or the journal page. Now, these are the, typically the information uh, that we see and what is that we normally look in for. So this is my research paper, which was published in Marketing Intelligence and Planning. Uh, the research paper title is Why Customers Make Mobile Payments Applying Means and Chain Approach. Now, the information that we'd be looking for in every such publication would be, number one, the name of author or the authors. The way it is listed is, the first name followed by the last name, comma, the second author, comma, the third author, and so on. But the way that APA uses in citation is something which needs to be uh, kept in mind. So I'll give a few tips as we progress. Through, so please do make note of all of this. So whenever we look for the information, it is always given with the first name uh, followed by the last name. But we, uh, when we make an entry in Mendeley, it is either we can use this format or we would use uh, the um, last name comma first name but the way the citation happens in apa will always be the last name of the first author comma the initials of the first author then would be for the second author and so on so when you make an entry in mendeley it should be the complete name of the author should be entered okay so the first is about the name of the authors followed by what is the date of publication Okay, when was the article published in this particular research paper is what we need to look for this information. So this one is January 2021, followed by what is the title of publication or the name of the article. So why customers make mobile payments applying means and chain approach. 
The next we would be looking in for is source of publication. Uh, it could be the journal in which it is published, followed by the volume number and the issue number. And we would also look for the page number, you know, the starting and the ending page. When we cite this particular um, information in our uh, manuscript or a dissertation or thesis or a research paper, um, it is always uh, entered in an APA format like this, which includes the last name of the first author, comma, the uh, initials of the first author with a full stop, then comma, ampersand. If there are two authors, there would be an ampersand followed by uh, something similar for the second author. Okay. So the first thing is about the author or the author's name followed by the year would be in brackets followed by the title or the name of the research paper. I, I've highlighted each section so that it's easy to, to know followed by the source or the research paper. Now in APA format, this has to be in italics followed by the volume number. So volume number 39 typically indicates that it is the 39th year of the publication of that particular journal. So the first year they would have started would be volume one followed by volume two, three and four. Then comes the issue number. Now, number of issues that the journal publishes in a particular um, uh, journal would typically vary. For example, uh, some journals um, would have only one in a year. Some could have uh, every quarter. Some could have on monthly basis. So accordingly, the number of issues would again change. So this uh, volume followed by the issue number is used and then the page numbers. So the starting page and the last page of that particular manuscript followed by the DOI or the digital object identifier. DOI is something which uniquely identifies uh, the existence of a particular um, uh, research paper digitally. Okay, So these are unique numbers which are given in for. So I can search for my research paper just by this particular DOI. Okay. Now, before I dwell into further, are there any questions from the participants? Uh, there is uh, just one question, uh, like uh, how many average references must a researcher go through to write a PhD thesis? Okay. As I said, it typically depends upon the, um, I, I would strongly suggest you should follow your university guidelines. Uh, uh, can you name the, the person who has asked this question and from which university or which place he or she is from? Actually, the username is uh, just a number and some letters. Oh, okay. No problem. No, no problem. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'll just answer this. Now, there are no hard and fast rules for this. Now, yeah, why yeah. I He's mentioned about Quantum University. Uh, Quantum University. Okay. Which place is yeah. this Quantum University? Rurki, he said. Oh, hey, Rurki. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, now, typically, what happens is whenever you are. Um, now, why I asked the name of the university is because there are certain norms that you follow uh, as part of the university whenever you write your PhD thesis. I would say ideally it could depend upon number one, the number of studies that you have used. Number two, how depth or in depth of these studies that you have as part of your research. In certain cases, it could be on a range. If I give a range, it could be anything from 150 to 300. That's only a range what I'm giving in. For example, when I did my PhD, mine was consisting of four studies. The first study was qualitative followed by three studies which were quantitative in nature. So um, certain universities also has these different norms about how many studies are being used because I have done from IM Ranchi. And in IMs, we've got multi-studies. It's not just a single study that we use for. But predominantly, most of the scholars would use a single study as part of the thesis. So it will drastically change from uh, the thesis to thesis based upon the type of work that you undergo. The other considerations are, like I talked about SLR and meta-analysis. So in the literature review section of your PhD thesis, if you have engaged into SLR or doing a meta-analysis, again, the number of citations would also increase accordingly. So that's, that's the reason I said there are no hard and fast rules, but I can give you a range of the number of references which are used typically on a, a PhD thesis. Okay. 
Uh, I hope that answers. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, how do we cite online sources the APS type? Okay. Uh, when you're talking about online sources, I believe you're talking about um, the websites. And if yes, I will be demonstrating this a bit later on. Um, I've just introduced about the references now. So when we work with Mendeley, I will go step by step. First about making use of the uh, research papers, citing them in uh, a Word document, both in-text as well as in-text citation. And then I can take an example from this um, uh, website as well in order to cite for. Okay. So uh, please do remind me later on if, if, I, if I forget to cover this. Okay, any other questions? No, sir. Okay, I'll continue then. Uh, so um, if there are any questions, please do not wait for any particular section. Uh, though I will have a Q&A at the end as well, I will give adequate time in between also. So uh, whenever you have any questions, please feel free to ask using the chat box and the moderator would queue, uh, queue the questions. Okay, now uh, when we move into the research, there are various types of data or the formats of data as well as the usage of it. In today's world, since everything has got digital, there are, uh, you, know, you know, it's much easy, but also it creates a lot of issues as well. So let's look into what kind of challenges are being, uh, are being faced by these scholars. Um, I'm sure most of you would have heard about the Moore's law. If I make use of the Moore's law and the growth of the data over a period of time, what we see on the uh, x-axis is in terms of number of uh, uh, number of years, starting from 2006 onwards till 2020. The graph is as as um, uh, recent of uh, 2020, and on the y-axis is the data volume. So if you see here, it's an exponential growth of data. What it has happened over the past few years, uh, we all are uh, familiar with what KB, you know, MB and gigabytes and terabytes are. So if you want to buy a USB drive, um, you get in, uh, you know, few gigabytes. If you have an external hard disk that you want to get in for some ter terabytes is what we look for so the data what we see here is actually into 40 uh, zettabytes so it's not too far that we talk about yota bytes uh, uh, so um, the kind of challenge what it follows um, is also quite high for the research scholars so uh, imagine what we look for 10 to the power 9 for the gigabyte versus 10 to the power 24 for yota bytes so uh, looking in for information, the growth of the data is again quite huge. So if I want to draw this analogy from, from Moore's law, uh, Moore's law is typically what they used into the semiconductors in order to understand about the number of transistors that can go into a semiconductor device or a microprocessor, as well as the miniaturization of this. If I want to draw an analogy from Moore's law uh, into the growth of the data, so the amount of data in the world actually doubles every two years. So look into the kind of challenge that you would be facing. If you're a research scholar who has just joined in today, you submit your PhD thesis in the next three to four years time. So the amount of data has actually grown uh, quite high by the time you submit. So you need to make sure whether have you included relevant studies as part of your um, research or not. So this is something which actually bothers a research scholar. So the kind of problem that exists is one data is too much fragmented and it is poorly indexed. If you want to search for the research papers, it is not in one place. Um, multiple, uh, uh, if I talk about publishers, there are many publishers. I'm talking about only you know top rated good journals. Many publishers, each publisher is having n number of uh, journals that they publish as well. So identifying, finding, and then indexing them is again a mammoth task and unusable data often lacks the content or metadata to be used by others. I'll give an example of what metadata is a bit later on. Now, when we talk about diverse data, so as a scholar, we could use something like equipments. Um, it could be the test results from each of the equipments. It could be from the softwares. If we're using quantitative analysis, for example, you're doing say structural equation modeling. So you use mediation, moderation, say SPSSMOS or PLSM. 
accordingly the type of outputs that you get um, what needs to be used in for it could also be you know something on the scripts and codes it could be from picture objects some process mapping that you use for so the type of data that could be used is typically based upon the research and it's quite diverse in nature so what we use is something known as a fair guiding principle f stands for findable so as a research scholar you need to be something focusing on your research rather than spending too much amount of time on searching for other, um, uh, you know, in so many places. Um, uh, for example, uh, when we use um, uh, a research paper for literature review, we read the literature, we have a method of scribbling them or writing some of, or making our own notes. So rather than putting it in different places, everything should, should be in such a way that it's easy for the scholar to find them. So it should be finding the research paper itself and the ones which are relevant to your study and about the type of um, uh, you know, data that you want to use as part of your study. It should be accessible, open source, usable, interoperable format. So many things that we talk about here. For example, if I'm co-authoring with another, another scholar or say another faculty, what needs to happen is this um, if I've created my own library item or the list of papers that I want to cite within my research paper, uh, when it is being co-authored by another person, it, it should not happen that another person also needs to you know, input all these information into the library. The type of information that we should use is something which should support in multiple devices. It should be usable. It should be something which can be interoperable uh, uh, into multiple devices as well as from one format to the other format. Interoperability labeled with clear defined vocabulary and it should be reusable, licensed, high quality as well as unique uh, entries. So let's go through the introduction of Mendeley now, once we understand about the kind of challenges the research scholars face and uh, some introduction onto what I've given on, onto the uh, references, uh, different styles of references that exist for. So what is Mendeley? Mendeley is a uh, free academic software. That means it is typically used for references and citation by academicians, by research scholars, by students for their manuscript, for the PhD thesis um, uh, or for their dissertations. It can be used in multiple domains. That means it could be um, um, in social sciences, in management, agricultural, pharmacology, law, any domain that you look in for can be used um, um, uh, for references using Mendeley. It is cross-platform. That means you can install this either on a Windows operating system or a Macintosh iOS or a Linux. It also supports various types of browsers. It could be Google Chrome. Um, it could be Internet Explorer or the one that you use as part of your iOS as well as the Linux operating system. So what you get this screen is the for the desktop. And the second one is for the web. I'll, I'll show when I when I go into the demonstration part of this. Um, uh, as part of the prerequisites for the workshop, you all have received this uh, instructions in order to install Mendeley as well as to create a user account. So this web page typically talks about, you know, uh, you'll have a button to install Mendeley. And uh, once you download Mendeley and install it on your system, you can go ahead and then create a user account. Now, the reason for creating a user account is so that whenever you use your Mendeley desktop, the library gets synchronized with the cloud version of Mendeley. So you have a replica on your system as well as a replica of it on the cloud version of Mendeley, which can be synchronized with your desktop version as well as you can also open it on a internet explorer or a web browser so uh, the only prerequisite is that you should use the same user account at all the places in order to make sure that the library items are synchronized so once you create a user account you can then sign in okay uh, so once you sign in you will be able to see the library items so um, the, the, the typical method for doing it is, for example, if I go in to mendeley.com, okay, this is what is the web page you get for 
you have uh, you can download create an account sign in or you can also look for the solutions or the support you can also search for various articles that exist for from within the mentally so once you have created the method to sign in is click on sign in it will ask for the user account and the password so my this is my user account so let me just sign in so as soon as i sign in i am now signing in using a web browser onto the cloud version of mendeley so it will have my name and i can go into the library okay uh, when i look for the library it will sh show all the uh, list of uh, research papers or the library items or the for example the references for the books and all that i've created for um, so it accesses the cloud version and shows on a web browser so this is typically how uh, we can um, log in to the uh, the cloud version of the library okay so that's about this particular interface and uh, this is to download and to install it so once you go into the page you will get a, a welcome message you can also search for the articles from the library and you can also find the various research data so what typically this means is if i if i go back to mendeley so you've got something you know here wherein you can search for the different articles and all and it also gives you the option by which you can look for the different uh, uh, data sets which has been uploaded by other researchers and you you have the option by which you can download and then perform some test uh, or to run through some of the tools that you find okay, now choosing the reference manager um so Hello, uh yes please yes sir so sorry to interrupt but there are some questions yeah let, let me complete this part i will i, I will uh, answer the questions okay 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 sure in the after a couple of slides i will then uh, uh, give the option to answer okay so uh choosing the reference manager so typically what do we do we collect the different citations as well as full text articles so full text articles are nothing but uh, what we do is we collect different research papers and then we store them in one particular place okay so we don't have to have multiple things in multiple places multiple folders and all as part of our study you can read annotate and cite from one place so typically what this means is um let me show you the interface of this is the mendeley desktop i will come i will go step by step okay so what typically this means about read annotate and cite is uh, means what you see here is uh, uh, the icon of pdf so whenever i uh, have this particular um, research paper in in my library i can open it okay i can read from within here i don't need to do it from any other place so when i read this if there are certain places for example which are relevant for my study what i typically do is i can highlight it okay um, i can highlight i can have some colors in order to highlight this okay so when i come next time when i open this i know only this particular line is relevant for my study and i can make use of it or it also has an option wherein i can uh, i can add a note all this goes into what is known as the annotations for example i say uh, you know i'm i'm just typing something uh, relevant for my study okay so as soon as i do this this gets added on to this particular um at um, uh, the selection of what i have made as part of this and it has some annotation so i can do everything in one place rather than doing it in some other you know scribbling on a sheet of paper or on a register everything is kept in one place as part of my library so that's what it means read annotate and cite from one place citation i will come about it a bit later on i can also share references with my co-authors so typically what i do is for example i have various um, library items and based upon the uh, then i actually create my own folders and all i will come into how to create and how to do this so typically i have so many of these so if i am using them as part of my study which i have co-authored with uh, with another um, author so rather than another author also performing the same activity i can share these references i will also show about how do we export and how can we import it into the library 
Okay, so that it becomes very easy for these scholars in order to share this information across multiple uh, with other uh, co-authors. I can also access my research across multiple devices. That means I could do it either from my um, house laptop or my workstation at my workplace. So uh, I can still access it. I don't have to be sitting on only one system in order to access it. I can edit referencing style for publishing in various journals as well as conference. Now, what this means is, um, as scholars, we also participate in various conferences. Each conference will have a different referencing style to be used in for. Uh, for journals, it could be different. For conferences, it could be different. So in order to quickly move from one to the other and to change from one style to the other, it's much easier by doing the reference manager. I can share my annotations with collaborators or the wider field. So various advantages. And you can store everything in one place. So, uh, you know, uh, rather than looking for multiple sources of information, all is stored in the library of Mendeley. I will also show you where to find these uh, 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 library entries and where do you find for the place where it stores all these PDF files that you have downloaded as well. So I'll cover it a bit later on, but yeah, this is one of the advantage of using the reference manager. And am I willing to pay or do I want uh, a free solution? Mendeley is a free, uh, academic software, um, you do not have to pay in order to make use of Mendeley for the references and citations. Okay, now let me take questions. Um, this part is about how do we build a library. So what I will do is I will, I will, uh, uh, I will stop here and uh, uh, I will take questions. After taking questions, what I will do is I will show you the interface of Mendeley, uh, all the features associated with it. Then we will get into how do we build a library. Okay. Yeah. Somebody had a question. Please go ahead with the question. Yes, sir. So cases where we should use ETAL, as I seen in some papers, there are more than three authors, but have not find proper rule for it. Um, if there are more than three authors, I, I, will, I will show in the demonstration as well when I, when I uh, come into using the citations in Microsoft Word. So please hold on for a moment. But if you're asking, where do you find? Okay, I will always suggest you to refer to the APA reference manual that gives the logic or the, uh, the correct style to be used for whenever you are referencing any of the um, say research paper with one, two, three, or multiple authors, you could have uh, as high as 25 different authors. And like the examples I gave in, okay, what we could, what we could have is uh, the way that it is cited, I'll come on into it a bit later on, but typically to tell you, we could have, you know, uh, um, uh, one author, the rule changes, uh, two authors, the rule changes, three authors, the rule changes. If there are more than three, again, the rule changes. And also, when do we use this at all? That also you need to know. Okay. Similarly, when you do an in-text citation, when you use, uh, uh, there are two types of citations, what we call as an in-text citation, as well as end text citation. The rules, again, changes uh, for each of them again. Similarly, here, when you use, uh, narrative citation, the rule changes. When you use parenthetical citation, the rule changes. So for each of this, uh, typically what you need to know is how, uh, how should you be using these um, uh, citations? So give me some moment. When I come to this particular section, I will explain it. Over and above, um, if you are um, still um, have doubts, you can ask questions or refer to the APA reference manual. Manual contains every intr intricate details about the way everything has to be cited for. Okay, if I want to use further, you know, complicate based upon what you have asked for, uh, if I have used, uh, say, uh, there are two authors, okay, that I'm citing, it could be uh, in year one, it could be in two different years, or I could have the same authors who have published two different papers in the same year. So year one, as well as year one, so two different papers. So the citation again changes for each of them. So there are certain norms to be used. Lots of them are 
taken care by mendeley by itself in order to uh, cite each of them uh, so you don't have to worry much about it but you should know you should be familiar and aware about how it is done i will give some examples when we work with citations when we come into that particular section okay any other questions yes sir. some which app is more accurate for citations I, I didn't get you can you please repeat what do you mean by more accurate for citation some which app uh, which app is more accurate for citation app we are not app, using yeah. an app here it's it's not an mm. app it, it is a software okay yeah. so this software is meant for citations only and that's why it's an academic uh, software so this is very much accurate but uh, the only variation what it comes in is with an in-text citation. Okay, it's all about how we use narrative and parenthetical citation. Um, uh, so there is nothing as accuracy, not accurate. It's all about the writing style of the of the authors. Now, if you need more information, what I also have is I do have a lot of information in my website. I can probably share this uh, with you all. Um, so. If, um, uh mandar how do you propose to share this information shall i put it in uh, the chat yeah, box or shall i share it box. with you okay put it in the chat box it will be great uh, i hope this is visible to everyone okay so this is my website where wherein you can find a lot of resources related to research primarily i have one specific for uh, references okay in this what you could find is um, uh, for example, if you look into, you know, um, uh, using the APA referencing style. Okay, I will go through some of this as well. Some I have already gone through. So it, typically what we talk about is uh, how do we use them? Uh, and uh, okay, uh, the next is about um, the guidelines. Okay, guidelines is when I will be talking about exactly uh, the different formatting rules uh, what APA suggests for. Now, some typical examples with single author, multiple author, what is parenthetical citation, followed by what is narrative citations, how should you be using them? Okay, I will also explain this when we come into that citation, but this is a good resource that you can always use in for. So let me uh, share this information with you all. Okay, yeah. And a uh, um, lot of things are being taken care, as I said, by Mendeley. But if you still have any further onto this, you must always refer to the APA publication manual. So this manual is quite comprehensive, including for all different sources that you use for citation as part of your reference paper. Okay. Any other questions before I move on to the next? Uh, yes. Uh... <laughs> okay. Good. Can... Yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, can we add CSV file directly to the Mendeley? Or can we add what file? CSV or an Excel format file. Uh, into Mendeley? Yeah, for citation. Okay. Why do you want to do it? Who has asked the question and what is the purpose for it? Uh, it's been asked by, on, on the YouTube platform. Okay. No name again. Okay, no, no problem. No, we cannot add a CSV file. Uh, now, how do we add the library items is something I will go through. These are the seven different approaches. So give me five minutes. Let me introduce uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the software Mendeley about the, the interface, and then I will come into how do we build. But uh, a simple answer about uh, the type of import exports that what it provides um, is something that I will cover for a bit later on. So please hold on for a moment about this question. Okay. okay Any so, other questions? Yeah. Uh, how to manage uh, research papers in Mendeley or Google Drive? Because when I download research papers due to their download name, it becomes hard to identify them without opening the file. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we, we will look into this about building the library item and how do we search from within this? Okay. Any other questions? Uh, one is like, which one is better and note or medley? Okay. I will, this session is about 
uh, introducing the, the different uh, references, references styles, and to introduce you to Mendeley, I will not be doing any comparisons with other tools. Um, I, I would strongly recommend you to build your own knowledge about in order to uh, compare. That's not the objective of this particular session. If you want to know anything about Mendeley, if you want to know anything related to references and citation, I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer the questions. Yeah, any so, other questions? Yeah, there are many. Can we take many? Is it? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I think some of them are asking the question, which I will be covering in the next couple of slides. So let okay. me go through this building the library, then we can come back uh, once more. Okay, sure. Yeah? sure, sure. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So the first is about the um, interface. So as soon as you open Mendeley desktop, this is what you see. You may not be getting, if you have installed it only recently today or in the past few days, and you have not used it, you may not be getting all this. So these are all library items. Okay. I will, I will, I will cover each one of them. So what we see in this, whenever we open Mendeley desktop is, you would see um, uh, my library, which is in a hierarchical format. So typically it is what you see as part of your uh, Windows Explorer. So for example, if you open Windows Explorer, you have got all these arranged, you know, in C drive, multiple folders, subfolders and all. The same is what is the organization in case of the My Library as well. So at the top, what you see is all documents. So which indicates all the documents which are there as part of the library. So what I have presently is 3,390 documents within my library of Mendeley. Okay, uh, so everything is listed. Then what we have is recently added. In case of recently added, it gives you the date when you have recently added any item to this library. So the last what I added was on March 16 with various such research papers which are listed in. The recently read, okay. So uh, uh, again, the particular library item that we open and read them are all listed out in here. Um, in in this particular in this particular format, so I can always look for you know if, if I want to know which one was the last that I opened and read for all this information. Favorites is something I think all of you understand what favorites are. Uh, what you have even in your mobile phones that you have a particular mobile phone listed as a favorite. Same as what we could do here. If there are some key research papers that you commonly use for and you want to review them. So for example, in my case, I've got 3,900, 3,390, which is quite huge, you know, to look for. So I can always mark few of them as favorites. How do we do it is I, I will just confirm in a moment. Needs review is something I have added a particular entry, whether I have done it, you know, downloaded it or, or have used some um, a method in order to perform an import. But either of the approaches I used as soon as a particular entry has to be confirmed by the author, it gets into new uh, needs review. So out of what I have is 3,390, there are a lot of entries which requires confirmation, uh, some thousand plus documents. So this simple method is I look for the information. If I'm happy with all the entries, I review them and then and I I click on details are correct it gets removed from here for example I, I take this particular one okay so it has got some special characters which are non-english like the one that we see on on g or you know something on the s so different text are being used in different um, languages so uh, i can review them and then uh, um, update or modify if i'm happy with it then i can say details are correct by which it will be removed from this so this only gives an confirmation or an option to the uh, scholar in order to review the different library items and the next is my publication so these are all my research papers which i have authored or co-authored with others i can i can keep adding on into my library which will which will get added into my publications unsorted okay what unsorted means is uh, what we can create within the library is create folders subfolders sub subfolders like this and i can organize all my library items into this now how do you organize them is typically based upon the convenience of a of a user or a scholar for example there are various approaches i've used for like a demo uh, or the all the research papers by a particular author 
or it could be for example i'm working one on artificial neural network or the different books entries that i have or it could be on say brand management i'm doing something on meta analysis so i've got for that i've got something on cdl something on cryptocurrency okay like this um, uh, you know i keep creating multiple folders so if i have any of the library items which are not added to any folder or a subfolder that would appear as unsorted okay and then all these listing are nothing but what i can create multiple folders within the library item now how do we create folders is at the end of it you will find as create folder click this for example i to create a folder i will use uh, our today's session so i say uh, demo uh, sems and i give a date say 2022 03 26 so today's date and a folder is created so you'll find it here on the top with demo but it has got nothing you know just blank okay so that's that's very easy in order to create folders i can also create folder multiple folders or subfolders within a particular folder if i double click on it i can edit um, or press an f2 key in order to edit or make any changes if i made any mistake or change the name accordingly i can make changes to it so that's how we could create a folder uh let me go back to uh, my library now in this interface what do you see is uh i think some people are waiting uh in the waiting room if we can just clear them yeah yeah we are we are adding them yeah okay now what we see here is um if i choose any one of them for example in this particular panel the first what you see is indicating a star is nothing but favorites for example i want to add this particular uh research paper in my favorites i just need to click on this so if i go back to favorites it is added okay this particular one towards green test if you want to remove either i can remove from here or i can remove from here either of the approaches are fine okay the next column what you see is this um uh, in green color it indicates whether i have read or not read this the third one has got uh, the third column has got multiple things in here if i'm making just an entry in that case for example i do not have access to a particular research paper i just make an entry for it or a particular book entry or a web page entry okay in that scenario there will be nothing here it uh, so you won't find any icon the other is if i have a particular research paper which has been added uh, to my library item i will get, you you'll find see there are a lot of them with this symbol of pdf file so uh, i can simply click on it in order to open uh, this is in journal of management studies one of the research papers okay so if i have a research paper added to my library item it comes in as a pdf file the other one is you know something like this if you get like this it indicates that the link is broken so for a particular entry i can also look in for this based upon the file okay if i have moved the file physically on my hard disk in that case i would get this link to be broken i i i may need to go back and fix it the other option what you would get here is uh, something like you know a download button so this indicates that i have access to this particular uh, research paper but i have just made an entry for it i can download it if i if i um, you know click on this you see here it it starts downloading and then now it has downloaded the research paper and saved into my hard disk so the next time when i go in it has icon gets converted into a pdf file like the next one as well it is something about a systematic review and i have access to this research paper i can simply double click and download it Okay. so that's about the third column what we see the fourth one is the author so it lists the author or the authors as part of the particular library entry when i say library entry it could be a research paper it could be a book entry or a web page or any secondary data or it could be a working paper as well so either of this so the author of that particular entry is what is listed here and then the title for example what is the um the title of the research paper or the name of the research paper then followed by the year the year when it was published in which journal was it published when was this entry added to the library uh, i'm getting some poll uh, are you initiating some poll 
moderators no sir sir we yeah, are just no. okay so uh, so the, the time when it was added now what i can do is i can also sort them based upon say the authors if i click on authors column all this will be sorted based on authors column or for example say title or the year or published in either of them i can also right click on this and choose specifically for example when did i read last if i want this i can i can also select this so there would be an entry into the library item the column has been added on when was it last read so this is something which is user customizable so the user can actually look in for the information in order to uh, you know um, so if i don't want i can simply go ahead and say uh, remove this uh, last read so it, it's a yeah so all these fields are something which are configurable now for each of these research paper what we can see is as soon as i select a particular library item i see the details on this right hand pane um the type of details that we get is um okay starting from here the details type it's a journal article if i click on this drop down it it gives you various options i can also make changes here as well for example if i say it is not a journal article but a book or a book section then it could be done accordingly so there are various options in this i'll go through you know some of them as an example so that uh, the type is a journal article followed by what is the title okay the title of this research paper followed by who the authors are if you remember uh, i always mention that you should while creating it should always be the full name should be listed but when you are actually seeing this in an apa format the method is different about the the way the initials are being used for okay so it lists all the authors followed by the journal in which it is published it is journal of business research in the year 2020 volume number issue and the pages and the abstract followed by the tags the keywords which are used as part of the research paper and that's what it it has as the author's keyword citation key is very useful if you do not find this please do enable it and it's very easy to enable uh, or i will i will show you uh, it in a in, in a while when we go into the options you can enable it so if somebody has a question how to enable please do ask uh, i will i will clarify or demonstrate this about the citation key citation key becomes very useful whenever we want to cite them in a word document while creating our manuscript or a thesis and then what is the type of the work it's a journal followed by the url okay so what is again very critical is about this doi Okay, the DOI is entered in. For example, in case of books, it will be the uh, uh, ISSN number or SSN numbers and all, which which comes uh, relevant. So for each of these, there will be a different set of requirements. I will show you about some of them as well. If it has got a PDF file, then the files will be listed here. That means it will be the physical folder and the name of the file where it is. Um, for example, if I select this, now this is the name of the file. Okay, so I can also add or remove. I can add a file, or I can even you know on this cross and I can remove this file if it is not appropriate or correct. So these are the various things that we could look in for onto the right pane to in order to identify the details about each of these. entries and then we can also add notes and uh, it gives in a hierarchical form for the contents of it okay so that's about the uh, the pane then what we are also have is to filter okay uh, by default all is selected that means all the entries uh, or all the uh, everything is what is being selected for so i get 3990 as part of my library item i can also choose based upon a particular author for example i choose david aker david aker is a one uh, author uh, who has conceptualized the um, consumer based brand equity okay so if if uh, i want to find out all the list of research papers related to one particular author as part of my library item i can easily go go ahead and select that okay like this for any of them you know i i can choose a particular author it lists down the number of research papers that i have in my library item okay or the other method is i can filter by author keyword or i can filter by my tags or publications you know sometimes what happens is whenever i'm submitting to a particular journal the preference is to have some of the you know research papers included uh, in my manuscript 
about that particular journal. Uh, for example, this is one say journal of mark marketing theory and practice. I when I'm submitting to this particular journal, I want to know how many research papers do I have as part of my library, which one of them are relevant to my study and should I cite them or not. So, so instead of searching somewhere else, this gives me a very quick view in order to find out the number of uh, uh, research papers that I have. So totally I have 16 of them uh, as part of a particular uh, journal. Okay, so I can, based upon the relevance, I can cite this as part of my study. It becomes very, very easy for the scholars in order to find and then use it. So filter by publication is something that typically I normally use in for or filter by authors. Okay. So what I will do is I'll go back to the default one rather than choosing all. I will keep it as um, all for the time being. Okay, as the default. One. Okay, the next it also has an option by which I can search here. For example, the one that I showed you about why customers use mobile payments. Okay, so some so I have you know all these listing based upon the keywords that I've used for. So I've got my paper listed here. Okay, so I can I can easily go in and then I can uh, so it gives an option for the scholars in order to also search based upon various criteria. So these criteria could be uh, wherein the search could happen either based on the author's name, it could be the title um, of the research paper, or the name of the publication, or the year or the notes. So we're very, very useful from within the library item, I can search for all this information. Okay, so this covers about what the interface look is. The other things I will keep covering them when I, when I come into the multiple sections. Now, what we'll do is we'll go through this um, this slide about how do we build the library item. <coughs> now, there are seven different approaches to build the library item. The first is manually. Okay, manually means I make all the entries manually with hand in order to create this library item. And it is mostly needed for older material. That means if I'm referring to some research paper, which was in 1960s, for example, uh, say a diffusion of innovation, which was published by Rogers in 1968. Uh, so, I don't have a research paper, but I'm referencing to that particular one about the diffusion of innovation, then I can easily type in or any paper that you have, you can always type in manually. That's the first method. Second method is data based transfer. So it is used for bulk export. So typically, whenever we do SLR or meta analysis, we search um, the different publishers using certain keywords. Or when I say publishers, it could be in Science Direct, it could be in Emerald, or it could be also in say Web of Science or Scopus based upon the access that I have for. When we search for it, and uh, rather than saving them in a particular file, I can directly um, uh, export all of them into the Mendeley library. I can do it one by one, or I can do it bulk. So both options is what I will demonstrate. Third method, method is drag and drop. You know, similar to what you do, is you simply drag a particular PDF file and drop it onto the Mendeley library. I'll also show this. What it uses is a metadata. Now, what does metadata mean? Okay, uh, to give you a quick demo, for example, I open any of the files. Um, let me quickly search for any Word document that I have. Uh, okay. For example, my notes. So when you're looking for properties, there are various information what you get about here, like the name of the file, okay, in the details, the title, the subject, tags. So all these are nothing but metadata. Now, whenever we are doing a drag and drop, it actually looks in for the properties of the file and then adds on. Now, what does this properties of file mean is? It requires various options. For example, what each of these entries would need is, the, uh, the type, whether it is a journal article, the name of, of this journal, uh, the title, the authors, the volume, year info. So all these are nothing but what comes from metadata. The word of caution is, if you have downloaded the research paper or a PDF file from an authentic source, you will get the metadata. But if you have um, downloaded from 
another source okay I, I won't go into those details but if it is not authentic what authenticity means is when you go to the publisher website and if you, have, if you have access to it you will have access to download that research paper that is what is an authentic source which will be complete with the metadata if you don't do that you could find some junk characters when you do a drag and drop and you should be careful about when you do this drag and drop in order to manually review them the fourth option is using a web importer um, i will also demonstrate this so for example whenever you're searching for some of these research papers and then you should be able to um, you know uh, use the plugin web importer in order to save that information the fifth option is watch folder uh, i will demonstrate each one of them i'm giving a briefing first so the watch folder is something in which uh, we tell Mendeley to keep watching for a particular folder and whenever I download a PDF file into that particular folder, it gets added automatically into Mendeley. The sixth option is I could use an RAS or a BibTeX file. I will also show you about what are the contents of these BibTeX file and the RAS file. It becomes something much easier uh, in order to take backups or interoperable or to use from one type of software to the other software, which are predominantly supported by an RAS or a BibTeX file. The seventh option is uh, to add a file or a folder. It does have an option by which I can choose either individual file or multiple files to be added on, or I can add the contents of a folder as well as its subfolders into Mendeley. So I will start with demonstration of one by one. Okay. So you all can follow it with me. You can use any of your existing, um, you know, uh, research papers or any of your publisher websites that you have access to in order to, you know, work on a, all these options. So the first option is manually. Okay. Now, what does it mean manually is what I would suggest to you is you can look for any information that you already have. Um, for example, I will use um, uh, my particular one. Uh, say I will use this one um, from from the organizers. Can you confirm whether these files were shared with the participants? Uh, Mandar? Uh, yeah, I'll just come, come to me in a minute. Uh, or, or do you want, can I share it now as well if it is not shared? Uh, can I put it in the chat box? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I hope it works if I put it in the chat box. I will be using these two files. Yeah, it works. Okay. And the second one is BibTeX example. I'll be using these two files as part of this. So participants, you can always refer to this or any other example that you have. Uh, either of the methods could be used. For, okay. So I'll be using this as an example in order to create a manual entry in, in Mendeley library. Okay, so uh, uh, th this is an extract what I have. So typically the way that we would go ahead is Either you can use file add entry manually or from this toolbar, you can choose add entry manually. So either of the approaches you could use. From the drop down list box, identify what is the type of library item. So here it is a journal article. That's what is selected also by default. Under the title, I will just go ahead here and copy and paste this, uh, the title of my research paper. Okay. Why customers make mobile payments applying a means and chain approach and then the authors. Now always remember this part. Um, see here if you see the authors that's the way it is given if I simply do a copy and paste. This is not correct. Okay, if I simply use like this it takes the complete one a single author rather what you should be doing is the method for doing it is. Uh, uh, as soon as you click you will see this you know you can have last name comma the first name. Okay, or you can type in the complete name uh, and then press an enter key. As soon as you press enter key, it understands that the um, the way I have typed is first name, last name without any comma. So it would uh, take, it would reformat it as last name and first name. Okay, uh, if you want, I'll quickly do it. One method is I just use my complete name as Raja Shankaran and press an enter key. As soon as I press an enter key, it reformats. It knows that Shankaran is my last name. It adds a comma followed by my first name. Okay. For the second author, similarly, um, it is, 
Chakraborty, comma, Shibashish. I press and enter. So that's how you should enter the authors. Now always remember, do not, do not include only the uh, uh, initials. Otherwise, what would happen is when we change from one style to the other, some referencing style uses the complete name. In that case, it could be a problem. Always use whenever you are making an entry, make it a practice that you should use the complete name of the authors. Followed by the journal. Okay, the journal is marketing intelligence and planning. I just do a copy and paste here. Okay, it also gives a suggestion based upon the one that I already have. It was published in 2021, followed by volume number is 39, issue number is one, page number is 109 to 124. Okay, if I have an abstract, I can do a copy and paste any of the tags okay, or author keywords and all. And then it is also important to make use of the DOI number. So I'll just do a copy and paste of this DOI number in that particular section of DOI and then save. So as soon as I say save this, all this information is saved. If I have made any mistake, for example, I can always go back and correct it. Um, uh, uh, for example, I missed out something or I want to delete something. Okay, I can always go ahead and do this. I can always make these kind of changes here. Okay, so that's how that's the first step what I have shown about um, the manually building the library item. Now, a very good approach what I would also uh, demonstrate now is um, now if I want to get rid of this um entry you can right click on it you can say when you say remove from folder so you should understand what actually happens in when you say remove from folder it only removes this entry from the folder but not from the library it will still remain in the library it will get into it will remain in all documents when you see it but it will get into unsorted so if you want to avoid that right click and then do remove from folder, uh, delete the documents. So this completely removes it uh, from my library. Okay, so that's one. Now the, um, okay, I'll just undo it. Now the other advantage with the DUI is, you know, uh, very, very useful DUI. Uh, one advantage is that, for example, I made some entries or wrong entries. Okay, I, I'm just arbitrarily making some change here. Um, for example, I missed something or incorrect information I have, but I have the DUI number. As soon as I have the DUI number, I can click on this hourglass. Uh, if I click this, it actually goes and looks up for the information and then it updates my record accordingly. So as soon as I do this, it actually performs the lookup and you will find that all entries are now updated. Okay, if there are any updates or any wrong entries within my library item, everything gets updated here. That's one of the advantage. The other advantage is if I want to add entry manually, and if I have this DUI number, I just need to enter it and then say, uh, I didn't, I need to do this lookup as well. Okay. Now, as soon as I do this lookup, you'll find everything is updated. So the it's very, very easy and simple in order to update all this item with a DUI number in case of the Mendeley. Okay. So that's about the first one. The next is, uh, if I want to demonstrate to you about the drag and drop, okay, what I, what I would do is um, I'll choose uh, any one of them. Um, okay, say this particular research paper. So I simply drag and then drop it here. So when I do this drag and drop, the file gets added. Remember, it uses the metadata. If I have downloaded from an authentic source, all the information that you get here would be all correct. Otherwise, it will be all junk characters. So you need to be very, very careful whenever you do this drag and drop. Though it is very easy, you know, something what we typically do in case of Windows environment, you can simply drag and drop a particular file in order to update it quickly. So it's, it's very, very uh, easy uh, for, for doing this information. Okay, I'll just uh, delete this document. 
The next is I can add a particular file. It is similar to the drag and drop. If I choose add a file, okay. For example, I get into my particular folder, uh, say somewhere where I have a uh, few of my research papers. Say I choose something related to um, the latent growth model. LGM stands for the latent growth model. I have few research papers associated with it. I can choose a particular file. Uh, or multiple files. I can use shift key for multiple file selection, or I can choose a file and alternate files with the control key and mouse key, and then choose open. So it now adds two of the files that I have selected for, okay? And it gives in all this information with all the details listed here, including its DUI number and the file, what it has, okay? All this information is now added quickly into Mendeley library. In order to add a particular folder, method is the same. Okay, if I choose um, a particular folder, so for example, if I go in the place where I have my research papers, um, say I have, I want to upload everything which is related to say uh, ANN. Okay, it also has uh, subfolders, or it also has something uh, you know like this, multiple subfolders. So it gives an option whether I should add only the contents of this particular folder or the subfolder as well by selecting this checkbox. I'm not doing it now because my each of the folder has got multiple files. Uh, so that's the method in order to, uh, so once you make a selection, click on okay, it'll upload everything onto the library. Okay, so what I have covered is um, number one, number three, as well as number seven, these three I have covered, okay. Um, <laughs> um, is it a good time to take a quick break for five minutes and then we'll continue with other three approaches, other four approaches? Yeah, a five minutes break or yeah, we'll take a five yeah, minute yeah. break. Sure. Yes. In case there are any questions, um, I can go ahead and answer them. Uh, yeah, so the previous uh, questions were like, uh, do we add a citation of original author also, or we only cite the author whose paper we are reading? Uh, what does this question mean? Yeah. Uh, sh shall I repeat it? Or, uh... <laughs> no, no. Uh, see, it's not a, what we read or the original author doesn't make any sense. Um, what makes sense is the research paper that you are referring to as part of your manuscript is what you need to cite, irrespective of whether you are reading a research paper. From that research paper, they have reference to something else and something else beyond that. It doesn't matter. So what you need to keep in mind is it is, again, the way that you are writing uh, or the style that you're up, you're adapting in order to write your research paper so whatever that you want you want to refer to or quote is what you need to cite okay uh, the next question uh, while writing the statement of any reference in the research paper should we change it or it should be as it was in the source journal oh then that is plagiarized any sentence you copy is plagiarized. Never ever do that. Your, your manuscript will be rejected outright. It should always be paraphrased or write in your own words. You can always refer to that and then you should give adequate credit to the authors by citing them, but never copy from any source. Anything, it could be a website, it could be a research paper, it could be a working paper, it could be a book as well. Never ever do any copy paste. You know, that's the, should I say, disadvantage with digital environment. We have got access to so much of information. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is a similar, I guess. Uh, can we copy and paste a library from one account to another? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I will show some of this as a demo as well, wherein you can do an import export. So typically when we do an uh, export, we can save it in an RIS file or a BIPTEX file. I will, I will also show that. And then it can be imported into another author's library. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
uh, can we rename the paper for easy identification in mendeley uh what do you mean by rename in mendeley uh you just type the rename the paper for easy identification there is nothing as rename the paper in mendeley okay it's the pdf file that you have so then you can give a name for the pdf file but um whenever you add any of the research papers it has got a particular option okay i will cover it here since you have asked for it, it has got the file organizer uh, let, let me repeat what you do is go to tools under the options you've got this second tab page is file organizer this file organizer indicates where the pdf files that you have uh, included in library item uh, the physical folder where it should be saved okay it is it has gone into the default installation folder of mendeley desktop so if i open this folder all these are listed here okay all my files that i have seen are actually listed here now how do i organize them mendeley also gives this uh, this option or information to the uh, user if everything is if i don't choose any other options everything will be stored only in this one particular folder there are other options for example you can sort the files into subfolders it will create various subfolders based upon year and title you can also pick and choose which one you want for example title followed by year you can do that all these you know some changes you could always do or the authors and journals okay it gives an example as this is how it will be saved otherwise you could also rename the document how do you rename them based upon you know you can always pick and choose about which ones you want okay for example it should be based upon say the author and the year you could do that okay i think this is what somebody has asked for if you want to save the file in a particular name uh, or you want to have author year followed by the title as well you could do that so it's all uh, uh, so how does it know what is the author name year and the title it actually picks up from the entry so this is something which is configurable by the user what are unused so if you want to use for example author followed by the year it gives an example as well so this is the file name what it will use in order to save this file on the physical folder whenever you download or create an item in library should it be hyphen separated should it be underscore a comma or a period separated even that can be selected for example it should be an underscore so you'll get author underscore title if you want to use the year as well for example author followed by year then the title that could be used it for okay so it it's something which is configurable by the user that they can always organize the way that the files should be stored i i normally don't but if you want you can always use this option oh i was showing it is my screen um, no 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 your screen oh, was not oh, visible okay let yeah. me reshare it uh, sorry you should yeah. have told me okay let me let me reshare it so yeah. what i was demonstrating is when you go under the tools options under the file organizer this is where you see all of this by default it goes into this uh, installation folder you can open this uh, folder so this is the default one so i normally don't organize uh, separately but uh, whenever i download i have organized them uh, like this so i don't have to separately do it but the option is available with the users for example you can also create the files which should be stored in separate subfolders so what it uses is something like this under the mendeley desktop author and journal this is again user configurable for example i want author followed by the year i can do that as well so i can pick and choose uh, amongst these the way that it should be saved the other is uh, apart from the subfolders the next is the document by itself i can make a selection like author followed by the year or i can say the journal as well okay so it gives an example here um, author dash year dash journal if i don't want to use hyphen or a dash say i want to use underscore i can always change it and then click on apply so this is what will be used whenever you add a particular item in library it is stored with this particular file name in the physical folder of the installation I hope it was visible this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, can we take some more questions? Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, please. So, uh, uh, so more the questions, the better it is. I can see active <laughs> participation from you. Yeah. 
so uh, it's uh, Iinka from Babcock University, Nigeria. Uh, oh. He's asking like a dear professor where I have a mix of library resources, say articles on public expenditure and those on FDI mixed together in the Mendeley library. How am I able to separate them into different folders in the library? Okay, uh, that's fine. So what you can do is, let me share my screen. So what you can do is you can create multiple folders here. And then you can, once you have made an entry, for example, I created another one like this. So if I want to move from one to the other, say this particular, uh, based upon the two different uh, uh, domains that you talked about, say I've got this one, which I don't want in this, I can simply drag and drop and move it to the other one. So it creates an entry here. So it's very simple. You can just move it around along multiple. You can create multiple folders and then move from one place to the other. You can arrange. It's it's very good option. Okay, uh, good that you asked this. So rather than putting everything in the uh, main or a single folder, you can you should normally organize it based upon the choice of a scholar. Like I showed some of the examples wherein I have organized it based upon the domain, the theory, some could be on statistics, some could be on the type of research that I'm doing, say meta-analysis, SLRs and multiple things. So you should typically organize it. It's, it's a very good practice. Okay, so uh... Nitigya Kumar is asking, uh, if I quote a particular sentence, sentence or information from one study, which was itself quoted from another study, then which study should I need to put in reference, new or the original one? <laughs> okay, I would typically suggest you to, uh, you to join another session, which is uh, related to uh, research paper writing. Okay, but ideally what you should do is, I'll give, I'll give you in a very quick short form. Okay. Ideally, what you should do is whenever you are citing, there, there are two approaches for doing it. One, you can cite only the original author. Second option is both. That means the one that you have referred to and the one that he or she has referred to. It, it, it is typically based upon the writing style of the authors. Okay. Okay, last uh, similar question for uh, like plagiarism. If I have downloaded any research paper from sci-fi domains, which is not legal to download, will it uh, create any not problem in Mendeley? Let us not talk about yeah. those. Uh, I will not encourage and discuss about any of this. That's why I said, if you have not downloaded from an authorized source, you could have problems. So I will, I will only restrict at this stage. Okay, we are in this public forum and talking with multi countries multiple things i would not encourage anybody to use other i will not be discussing about any other uh, unauthorized forums as part of this session yeah yeah any other questions uh, yeah like can you please tell me again how to add file from subfolders into mendeley i have just demonstrated that you simply yeah. need to select it and then uh, do it yes yes yeah okay Shall I continue then? Yeah. There are more questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, did I share or is it not shared? No, sir. No, not yet. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. I hope it's visible. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, the next option. Um, I think I've covered manually. I've covered uh, drag and drop and add files and folders. Okay. Next, what we'll do is we'll look into web importer. In order to do this web importer, what you do is, um, okay, I'll give some simple examples. Okay. Like uh, the one that I went into Google Scholar, I typed this, you'll find a lot of these uh, from the search results. It gives you an option whether you've got the PDF file that you can download or not. Okay. Similarly is what you get from different publisher websites. So I will, I will go into my, um, okay. Before I do this, let me give you a quick one. Say for example, I go into Emerald. I search for uh, some concept uh, in which I want to have the research paper. Say I choose, um, which one should I choose? Anything, say strategic management. 
Okay, it gives me lots of these search results. Now, here it says the first one is 1983 of strategic operational approach to management. It gives me a PDF file. When I select this, it says, okay, it gives me this information, but it does not give me any option to download this PDF file. Hence, I do not have access to this. It says you should access via institution or other option. Now, all these are when for every such websites, when I talk about these publishers are uh, like Emerald, Taylor and Francis, um, uh, Elsevier or Science Direct, okay, Wiley. These are all, you know, uh, big publishing houses. It, it is done either via subscription or per individual research paper wise. Okay, so if you want to access this, let me go ahead and um, okay, first let me show, let me demonstrate with how do we add this and then I will get into with a PDF file. Okay, so if you want to add this for which I do not have an access, for example, how do I add this entry into the li Mendeley library? For that, I can use this web importer. As part of the prerequisites, one of the link which was sent across to you was to install the web importer as well. So when you select this web importer, use the same ID that you have used to log in. Okay, then it's it, it actually gives in the results here. Now it it shows. Um, so today what it did was twenty twenty two zero three. Okay, let me choose this particular folder in which I want to add this. Okay, I can choose a particular folder where I want to add this particular entry. Otherwise, by default, it will go to my library. So if I want this to add this, I simply select this. I've searched for only one based upon the search results. I went into one particular website uh, where I want to add this research paper. I select this and click on add. Okay. It gives a confirmation that reference has been added. Okay. Now, if I go back, either I can do it from here. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was here. So I'll just do a synchronize. Okay, I'm doing it quickly so that I can I can verify and validate while we are we are demonstrating it. Otherwise, the synchronization happens between the Mendeley uh, cloud version and the desktop. Okay, where is it? Uh, let me go back and log into Mendeley here under the library. Let me quickly verify this. Yeah, under the demos, uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know which one did I choose to, anyway, it's here. Okay, if I go back into this, it was strategic operational approach to management. Uh, factors affecting, no, it didn't. It says it has. Let me go back and check what it has done. Is it actually added or uh, industrial product analysis? Now these are the. Oh yeah, sorry. Here it is. I was searching at a different. So it, it's all added at almost the same time. Okay, so that's why I was not able to find this. See this. This is the one. Skipton. If I go back here. The author is MD Skipton under the management, uh, which is published in Management R Research News. Okay, so that's what I find here. This one, Skipton, uh, the fifth one in this, the strategic operational approach to management at 3.40 p.m. Okay, the one which I've added. If I just open this, I can, th this is the cloud version what I'm, I'm looking in for. Okay, so I, I can see all the entries with no PDF file. Okay. And I can also synchronize by clicking on this particular one, wherein it is synchronized the cloud version with my Mendeley desktop. Okay. So that's the entry what it has made. And similarly, what I could also do is I can, <coughs> I will then show you about uh, after um, uh, adding or logging on to it. Okay. Um, 
I've added multiple ones together into this. Okay, so the next step is, uh, if, if you want to um, access this, say this second one, I will demonstrate with the, with the second search result, okay, for which again, I do not have access to, or if I look in for, okay, something, uh, you will find that none of them I have access to, okay, it always talks about to view the access option. Now, if I have an access, how would I add this? If I go back to my, my login as part of my I am one, I would look for to log in under the Emerald. And what I did this search option was based on uh, strategic management. So I'll use the same search results. gives me all these options okay again it has got strategic operational approach for which i do not have access to but there are many more for which i have access for example it says content available i can always open this pdf file okay in order to validate yes i have okay now with this search result uh, i have selected how many i think uh, by default it is 10 per page so if you want to add them okay how how should i do it I go into this. I simply need to click on this uh, web importer. It actually reads this particular web page. It shows all the listing here. Now, I do not want all of them to be added. I can pick and choose which one I want. For example, the one that I showed was uh, for the one that I, I have access to. I think it was, uh, I forgot which one I selected. Yeah, the second one. Okay, strategic housing management, something. Okay, so I, I could uh, strategic housing management in uh, an asset. Comprehensive strategic response, thinking, social media, global. Yeah, an asset. Okay, for example, this or it actually looks for, I, I can pick and choose which one I want by making a selection here. And then I could then select a particular folder in which I want this to be added. I can say add, or I can do multiple ones that I can add on as well. So if I go back and view the library, it will, <clears throat> okay, it'll give me a listing of, the one which has been added now at 345, the strategic housing management and asset management. Okay. Okay. Let me make another one for which I should be having a lot of access to say if I choose something based upon say mobile banking. Okay. I'm getting a lot of these results with the pdf files and access to if i go back here okay it again it again checks for them so based upon my access rights it will actually add on for example this one if i say this particular one i select this or say okay i'll choose one of them and i select it into this demo uh, Uh, it should be this one. Add. I've got so many folders I add on one and I keep checking on the other one. <laughs> okay. Then if I go back to my library to view this. Okay. So what you will also find here is it gives a tick mark for the PDF. That means now PDF is also included as part of the library. So I can verify this. Okay. This is a particular one. You'll find it has got a, a down, a drop down one. It's saying that PDF file is available for download. That means I have an access to this particular entry and I can also download this. So if I go back into my Mendeley desktop, let me quickly refresh this. 
did I save into, I don't know, one of this, yeah, okay. See here, it's showing as a drop down. okay? That means I have access to this PDF file. I just need to click on this, it will download it now. Okay, you'll find it is being downloaded and I now have downloaded this paper. And it has also made an entry as well in my library item. Now it gives in something like whether the details are correct or not. When I physically go and verify it, I find the volume number issue number is missing. Okay, again, it is based upon the metadata. I can search for by simply looking into the DUI. Okay, there are two approaches. One is to use the DUI or the second approach is selecting from here. It has got the view research catalog. Okay, either of the approaches I could use for in order to search for further information in here. So once I'm happy with this, I can go ahead and say the details are correct. Or if I'm not, I can I can go into, you know, validating this. Um, I can the method I could use it. I can even open this file. I can see what type of data it is. So it is in 2021 November. Okay, so it, it does have a DOI number, but it doesn't have any page numbers and all. So, so that means it is still not into the publication date what it has got. So it should be an impress. That's why the volume number and the issue number is missing. If it was accepted in November 21, but it is not yet published. So some of the journals have got their own queue in order to um, uh, you know, do this. So I can also search based upon the DOI number, what it will give in is um, in which particular stage actually this could be. Okay. Uh, so accordingly, I can then validate it only says article publication date, but not the date when it was published. So it could be still in a queue. We are just in March. Some take two months, some can take almost six to eight months as well, based upon the number of journals, number of articles that they have to be published in that particular journal. Okay. So that's how we could add a particular entry as well as a PDF file based upon the search criteria that we give with the web importer. The next is um, I will cover this using RAS or BibTeX file. Okay. Now, what is this BibTeX file? <coughs> I have given a particular, uh, I've shared it in the, in the chat box, this BibTeX file. If you all can open that. You should open it with a notepad. Okay. Uh, I'll quickly explain. You should not be making any changes to it. A bib text file typically follows this particular format. It starts with an ampersand. That means it has got its own grammar or the syntax the way it is created. Followed ampersand followed by a journal article. So it says article. Within this curly braces, opening and the end curly braces, it then defines all of this. So this is nothing but the citation key followed by the author, the DOI, journal, number, title, uh, the volume and the year. So it will have many more like this. So it's a text file which can be opened and edited with a text file. In order to make an entry of this in a library, there are two approaches. One approach is simply do a drag and drop for this bib text file. The second approach is you can also perform something what it, what it has is I can import as a bibtex file or an endnote or an RAS file. So in order to do this import bibtex file, select this particular folder and the file name. Okay, so it is a bibtex example. What I have, select this and choose open. It has got only one entry. Okay, when you have multiple entries, even all this can be used. This is how you could share the information from. Uh, what has been updated from one author to the other authors by simply creating this bib text file. Now, how do you create this bib text file also? I will explain it in a moment. Okay, So this is exactly based upon the entries what we have in this bib text file. If I open it with a notepad, you will find the title is factors impacting mobile banking in India. And that's what it is. Okay, Followed by the volume, it says it is ahead of print 2021. Um, and this is the journal, I am Code Society 
and management review. So you'll find all of this information listed exactly based upon what you have as part of your uh, the BIP text file. Okay. Okay. So that's to add a BIP text file. The next we will move on to the. Uh, so I have covered manually. I have covered drag and drop web importer uh, number six and number seven. Two are number two and number five are left. I will cover number two now about the database transfer. So this is all about Scopus, Science Direct, or Web of Science. Whenever we want to do a bulk export, so the method to do is you should have access to the Web of Science or the, uh, for example, um, if I if I show you with um, this one as Scopus. <coughs> Okay. Say in the Scopus database, I search for um, some of these documents. I say I use this something similar, say mobile payments. Okay, I search for for this. It gives me a lot of these results. Okay. Um, as I said, you should have access to this uh, Scopus in order to search and then make use of it accordingly to add them in mentally. So it gives me a lot of these results. I can also use some intelligent search by using and or brackets uh, as well as double quotes and all. So, so uh, for all of this, I can choose um, in order to perform, I can choose say all of them. I can export it. I can export into Mendeley. It gives me this option to directly import into Mendeley. I can use that or I can use, save it in an RIS format or a bib text format. With this, then I can then perform an import into Mendeley. If I, for example, save it in an RIS or a BIP text form. Okay. Or I can directly use it into doing it in Mendeley. Now this is quite huge. So I'm, uh, let me show a quick demo with the BIP text. Okay. So in BIP text, I can also pick and choose what sort of information do I, do I want? Say all these citation, bibliographic I want, abstract also I want, funding and other information I don't. Okay, so with this, then um, once I have made these selections, I can choose export. So it is a, oh, it's only first 2000 documents. I say export. Okay. So I will save it into that particular folder of what we are using it today. Yeah, under the sense mainly workshop. I give it say Scopus followed by 2022-03-26. I save this. If I go back to this particular folder. Oh, there is, I still keep getting, a lot of people are still joining and uh, I keep getting the notification. Yes, sir. Okay, so in this, um, what I can do is I can go to this folder where I have, oh, it's still downloading. Okay, it's a, it's 4.8 MB in size. I think now it is done. So if I go to this, okay, it's a BibTex file, right click, I can directly put in uh, desktop, Mendeley desktop, but I'm opening it with a notepad. Since it's quite a huge file, you'll find there are a lot of entries into this now, based upon the selections that we have made. The first one is an article followed by, okay, the next one is here. Okay, so like this, you'll find, you can do this bulk upload into Mendeley. So it has, it runs into, you know, I think there are 2000 entries what it has. Now the time when it will be useful is when we do um, say for example, SLR or a meta analysis, we have our search criteria listed here. And based upon that, we choose the type of documents uh, which should be downloaded. So in this, I've just selected only as um, mobile payments. I can make uh, additional search condition. For example, what I could do is I can say it should be mobile payments or I can use digital payments. Okay, I can 
I can use all this, you know, search condition, doing an intelligent search. If I want to restrict or um, only for those which uses a particular model, UT, uh, AUT, I can do that and then search. So it's all about your, um, your the scope of your study that you can define with this uh, search key. So what I had earlier was more than 3000. Now it is limited to 75 documents as part of the research. So you must always use this intelligent search whenever you want to uh, restrict the search based upon your scope of the study. So it gives only these 75. Now I can easily uh, make use of this in order to download this. Otherwise, if it is 3500 or 4000, in order to review each one of them for your systematic literature review or meta analysis also is a mammoth task. So be very, very, uh, you know, focused, have a focused approach whenever you use this search. Okay. I'm, um, so the method is exactly the same in order to add this. I just need to say file. I can perform an import BibTeX file. I just need to choose that particular one, which is the Scopus and everything gets added. I'm not doing it now because there are something around 2000 entries, if I'm right, which was saved as part of this file. So I'll just do a cancel, but this is the method in order to uh, upload or bulk upload from the search results into Mendeley. Okay. The last option is uh, using the watch folder. Now the method to use the watch folder is, I can create a particular folder and tell uh, Mendeley to watch it. For example, I create one in the desktop. I name it uh, as a demo for uh, SEMS 2022-03-26. So this is the folder what I've created now in my desktop. Now I will tell Mendeley that it should watch this folder. That means whenever I save any new research paper in this folder, it should get automatically added to Mendeley. So in order to do that, I go back here and under the tools options. Uh, I'm still getting, I think a lot of people are still entering into this. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, can you, can you please take care of it? Yes, sir, I admitted that. Okay, so here under the, let me repeat it, under the tools options, what you get is a third tab page as watch folder. You can look for which particular folder should be watched. So I created something under the desktop. Under the desktop, I selected, let me select this one, the one that I created now as demo sense and today's date. So once done, I choose apply and okay. Now, okay, the last I did was at 340. And if I go back to this folder, it is empty as of now, no contents. I go back to, uh, so typically what we do is we keep searching for the research papers. For example, I go into Science Direct. I search for something with say mobile, say marketing analytics. I'll choose the very first one, which is in Journal of Business Research on 6th of December, 21. I'll download this PDF file. <coughs> so let me download this and save it in the, under the desktop, the same folder. So I give it a name as say LIANG 2021, which is for marketing analytics and save this PDF file. I close this, I go back to the folder. This is now downloaded. If I go back to Mendeley desktop, you'll find Liang is added from performance, which is added now. Okay, so that's how we could quickly add. If I open it, this is what the file is. So that's how we could specify a particular folder to be watched by Mendeley. And whenever we download a um, uh, any research paper into that particular folder, it gets added automatically into Mendeley. So I'll go back and uncheck it so that it's, I've used it only for demo purposes. I'll just uncheck it and say, okay. Okay, so I've covered all the methods for 
building the library. So before I go into the references, are there any questions from participants? No, sir. Oh, no questions, is it? Yes, sir. No questions. That's surprising. Till now, there were so many questions. <laughs> Either I have answered all of them with this demo or <laughs> somebody has dropped off. Okay, I'll continue further then. Um, yes. if, if there are questions, then please do make use of the chat box. Okay. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Okay, I'll continue with the next one on how do we use um, the reference manager. Setting up the library I have covered. Finding syncing I have covered. Managing library I have covered all of this. Searching for the documents. Okay, uh, annotations I have covered for. Now the next is about using the citation plugin and uh, including in uh, Microsoft Word. So let me cover the in-text and in-text citations. So first what we will do is we'll use APA style. Uh, let me go back and change it to APA. Okay. So um, for the participants, what you should have is, um, you should have, if you're using the older version of Microsoft Word, when I say older version 2000, uh, beyond, before 2016, in that case, you should find this under the references tab page. Whenever you install the Microsoft Word plugin, it should appear the Mendeley Cytomatic under the references tab page. If you're using the newer version, there are a couple of steps you need to do. <coughs> I'll quickly show you about uh, 20. I, I, what I have is this 2019 version. Now in this, if you go into the references, you may not find it. Okay. So typically what you use, either use Mendeley site, which is in the uh, Mendeley um, reference manager, or you can use the same plugin for that. What you need to do is that is with the desktop. For that, you go into the options under the under the options. Go in for add-ins. <coughs> Select word add-ins. Click on go. You should find this Mendeley one point one nine dot eight. Select this. Choose OK enable the content. So as soon as you do it, you should be able to find this here. Okay, the Mendeley Cytomatic. This is one additional step to be done if you want to use the Mendeley desktop as part of uh, Word 2019. Okay, um, if you want me to repeat or you want the steps, please do let me know. Uh, I do have all this listed as part of my website. You could also make use of this. <coughs> okay. If Microsoft Word plugin is not appearing, then what should you do? Exactly the same what I demonstrated now is listed here. Let me paste it for you all in the chat. Okay, so this is the exact steps that you need to follow. If in case you are using the later version of Microsoft Word, like 2016 and 2019 with Mendeley desktop. Okay, if you need any more information, all lot of things are, are included as part of my website. You can feel free to make use of it. Okay, now let me go through how do we cite um, them in Mendeley. Okay. So, <coughs> so the first thing is I, I just type something, you know, I'm not, um, I'm just using it only for demo purposes. Say the various methods that we could use for, uh, first I will demonstrate with an in text citation. What we do is when we write a particular sentence, uh, say the author uh, identified, the variables to be used and found 
I am just typing something arbitrarily. Okay. So whenever we do this as part of our manuscript, the different approaches we use to cite is either I can cite at the beginning of the sentence, I can cite anywhere in the middle, or I can cite at the end of the sentence. Okay. Now, which one should I use is typically the writing style of the author. Okay. So either I use it here or I use it here. So this is the approach that is used by the authors based upon the way that they frame a particular sentence. So in order to cite them, the method is, okay, if you want to have at the beginning, I just place the cursor here, click on insert citation. So here, either you can search by the author, the title or the year in my library. <coughs> Suppose I just say Shankaran 2020 and select OK. So this research paper is now cited. The next is I'll quickly show about the end text citation as well, which is also known as um, references or a bibliography section. So the way that you could do is now this step has to be done once for your document. So uh, once you have the section defined, click on insert bibliography. So anything that you have cited as part of your document will now be included in this bibliography with a complete citation. Now you will find it since I've selected the APSL, it is exactly the way that I demonstrated with the author's last name followed by the initials of the first author with an ampersand followed by the second author, the year, the title of the paper and all this. Now, if you want to cite at the middle, for example, the method is again uh, similar. So insert citation. Now I choose another paper. I choose say a second paper. I'm citing two authors now, rather than one, I'm citing two authors. Okay. Now, as soon as I do it, you'll find that it is now added in the references section as well for both the authors. Similarly, to add at the end, the method is same. You place your cursor here and in, uh, insert citation. Say so, yeah, I just choose any one of them. And uh, say so, yeah, I choose uh, this particular one. I can choose more papers. I'm just choosing arbitrarily. Okay, these are the three papers that I have. Now, this is typically the way that it should be cited in here. Now, the reason I'm showing it like this is, um, what are the uh, parenthetical and the narrative citation? So typically what it means is, if I take you back to my website, so it says, the way that parenthetical citation should be cite the last author's name of the uh, the last name of the author it should be in the the uh, author and the date should be separated by a comma you know something like this so what typically this means in terms of the um, uh, parenthetical citation that means it is within the parenthesis okay so that's what typically this one is this is a parenthetical citation okay uh, let me put it separate. So this is what is a parenthetical citation. So that means within the parenthesis, the authors are cited. If it is one, uh, multiple authors, two authors, more than two authors, the way that it will be cited for. For example, what you see here, it, it is more than two authors. That's why et al has come. But all, are, all of them are within the, uh, um, the parenthesis. That's why it is known as parenthetical citation. The next is narrative citation. The way the narrative citation should be is, now if I add something like this, okay, I'll just do a copy and paste. <coughs> the author, um, instead of the author, I'll just say identified. We typically use like this, you know, we cite and then say identified the various um, variables to be used. Okay, something like this. Now, if I do like this, this is incorrect. The reason is the way APA uses in order to cite this should not be listed like this. It should be ampersand should change to and 
the bracket should be removed and only the year should be in brackets. And as soon as I move the cursor out of this, it indicates whether I, uh, I want to keep the citation. That means I manually edited this. Should I keep it or not? If I say keep manual edit, it will then uh, you know keep it here. So this is the correct approach of doing the narrative citation when I use it as part of my sentence. So we have to be very clear about the way that it is used for. If I use something like this, this would be an incorrect approach. Okay. If I say author or authors followed by then I give these citations, this is this is fine. Okay. So that's the way we use an in-text citation. <coughs> I think does somebody have a question related to this? I see somebody has raised a voice, raised your hand or something. Yes, uh, one person has raised his hand. Apoorva Sharma. Yeah, please go ahead with the question. Hello, Apoor. Okay, I'll go ahead if uh, the person has not asked the question. Okay, yes, now sir. this is typically how we would cite it. Um, now, the other thing is, uh, how do you know that uh, this is what has been used by Mendeley? As soon as you click on any of these citations that you have included here, you'll find it is grade. Okay, that indicates it is something which is coming from Mendeley. So, I, I will not recommend you to do this, but I'm just showing it to you. When you do this uh, right click and toggle fields, it actually creates all these quotes as part of it. These are nothing but the way the Mendeley communicates with Microsoft Word using API or the application programming interface. You must not edit any of this. So I just showed it for the uh, demo purposes. So if you are, for example, doing a copy and paste the way that I did, make sure that you have you completely copy it. For example, if I miss on any of this, it will simply be a text you'll be wondering what is happening. For example, this is just a text. It should be copied in complete if you're doing any copy paste. So don't make that sort of mistake. Okay. Just a word of caution. Okay. Now, um, based upon all the entries that I have made, it has created these references. How many do you have? Some six, seven of them. Um, okay. Now, um, changing from one style to the other, how should it be done? It's very easy. Under the style drop down, what we have is APA 7th edition. If I want to change it to Harvard style, I simply have to select it, download that particular style, and then select it. Now, how do we download? I'll just cover in a moment. So you may not find many of them, but I will show you how to use it. Okay. First, I'll demonstrate about selecting them. Then I will come into how do we download or install a particular citation style in Mendeley. So choose from one to the other. Now, as soon as you do it, you will see that a lot of changes have happened. It is now within double quotes. Okay. So the volume number, it has VOL with PP and all. So with just one click of a button, we can always change from one style to the other. And similarly, there are some which uses, uh, um, you see, this is another style for a European management journal. I triply uses numbered style. Okay. So the way the first occurrence within the document is what is considered as one followed by two. Whereas in case of APA style, it is organized alphabetically, irrespective of the position where it was added on. Okay. So you'll find this see here, number one. And what does number one ref, uh, uh, refer to? You know, something like this. So it is with Mendeley, it is much easier to change from one style to the other based upon the requirements of the uh, of the user. So for example, this is the third one. Okay. The citation styles are totally different. It has got this, instead of those square brackets in the reference, it has got one dot, two dot, three dot and all. So with each one of them, it would ideally change so you need to comply with the requirements of the different journals in order to find what it should be. I'll go back to APA style. Now, how do you know which one to use for? It is typically what you need to do is go to the journals website. For example, <coughs> if I choose 
Journal of Retailing and Consumer Service. It is JRCS. Each of these journals will have something known as guide for authors. Okay. Even if you go to that particular journal homepage, you should find uh, for guide for authors. So in this, you can always refer to the style to be used. So it says for the referencing and the formatting requirements, peer review. Okay, let me go search for this. Okay, style. So it, it, it says it does support the different CSS styles, the citation style language. Um, Yeah, here you go, the reference style. So here it shows about the reference style, what it uses as part of this particular journal. So rather than looking into for each of them and then complying to this, the I will show you some easy, easier method in order to use it. Okay, so this is for Journal of Retailing and Consumer Studies. <coughs> okay, so this is all about in-text citation. I have covered both um, uh, the this is the parenthetical citation followed by narrative citation as well as the in-text citation. Now, coming into how do we add these citation styles? If I go back to Mendeley desktop, okay, under the under the view uh, option. Select the citation style. This indicates about the various citation styles which are installed. Click on more styles. <clears throat> it opens up a particular um, tab page. It will show you the different citation styles which are already installed as part of. That means you have installed uh, in this particular desktop. You can also get more styles. For example, what I'll do is I'll just delete uninstall and then come back and install for the demo purposes. Okay. This blue book is used for law. Similarly, Chicago, American sociological, there are n number of such citation styles which exist for. Okay. So I, I will quickly uninstall some of them and then come back and demonstrate it about how do we install it. Okay. okay, I think this should be fine. <coughs> now, if I go into some that I uninstalled it, the way to get more styles is I can simply um, type for it. For example, decision support. I can see that journal name of the journal, decision support systems. I just click on install. Okay, now it it does the installation of that citation style to be used in this particular journal of decision support system. It's an A-star journal in ABDC ranking. Or if the style is provided as a CSL, I can simply use the URL in order to download that particular style and install it. How to verify, I can go here and choose whether it has, yeah, it has the decision support systems, which is installed. I can say use this style so what I could do is go back to my Word document. I can say more styles under this. If I want to choose a particular one, which I've just installed in, say DSS, I say use this style, done. In that case, I will get this under this drop down list box. So DSS. DSS also uses the numbered citation style. Okay, like this. So that's the method in order to search for a citation style and install in Mendeley and also to use it here. I can also swap from one to the other. Okay, so that covers about the citation style. Any questions on citation style before I move on further? Yes, sir. So how we do citations with number? I just shown it um, with the numbered citation style. Yes, 
I have selected decision support sciences, IEEE. So multiple citation style exists for with which are the numbered citation style. So you need to choose that particular journal what it uses for or the type of citation. Like for example, decision support sciences is the name of the journal which uses that particular citation style or IEEE. IEEE uses numbered citation style and that's how you could select it. So if it is not already installed, I've shown you the method to install it as well. Sir, so, so there is one more question. Sir, so explain the difference between research prominent citation and author prominent. Okay, I would want that person to uh, to come and ask for what does the what does the person mean by author prominent and research prominent? Ishad Khan. Ishad Khan, can you please ask your question? Okay, <laughs> if it's not there, let's move on. Okay, see, typically, uh, this is a referencing style uh, workshop. I don't want to combine multiple other things as part of it. I, I know uh, research is quite huge. We can't cover everything in two hours time. <laughs> yes. So let's focus on uh, referencing and citations and how to use it, uh, use them mentally. Yeah. And if we talk about journals and there are so many things that we could talk about from the uh, research paper, research paper writing. Uh, uh, that's for another workshop. Let me put it this way. Yeah. Any other questions? So, sir, it is true that a general is not substantial to be included in references since it is not scientific. Is it true? What does it? What do you mean by journal is not substantial? What do you mean by journal is not substantial? Who has asked this? Uh, Kenneth, can you clarify yes. what do you mean by journal is not substantial? I only okay. talk about um, the journal to be authentic. That means the way by which you use your user accounts in order to download the research papers or to see the research papers from the publisher's website rather than using an unauthorized place. What do you mean by journal is not substantial? Um, yes, sir. I actually wanted to ask how, how substantial can we include um, journal writings into our research or even in our dissertation because i'm a little bit confused because some of the um, some of i don't know some of my colleagues told me that um using journal is not that substantial it's not that very concrete when you try to use them as your references or a part of your citation so i'm a bit confused about it so sometimes i'm very hesitant if i'm gonna include journal research in my studies. Okay, uh, if you mean by substantial, um, there are different categorization of journals. Uh, which domain are you from, Kenneth? I'm actually dealing, sir, with education. Uh, education, okay. I'll give you an example from management field. I don't know in, in education, what could what could be the different categorization? Yeah, we in do management, management, sir. Uh, in management, the kind of categorization we have is uh, the way that the journals are identified. I will put it in two different categories. One is good, and second is not not good journals. Okay, not good journals are all predatory journals. Um, so the good journals are categorized um, as ABDC journals, which are. <clears throat> which are A star, A, B, and C. ABDC stands for Australian Business Dean's Council. They publish this list once every three years with the categorization of journals. So if it's a very good journal, it will be an A star journal. Then comes A, then B, and C. Anything which is not within this category is something that as a research scholar, you should avoid them. So if you're submitting to a journal, a good journal, which is an ABDC category journal, 
and if you refer to a journal which is not abdc then your paper will not be accepted it it's it's something which will not be considered to be a scholarly article that you are using it for so your citations and references should also be from good journals so the categorization equivalent for an abdc is also known as abs abs is in uk the uk governing body has categorized it as abs 1 2 and 3 so you should ideally look for these if you want to know how to find them it is there in my website you can always look for the information to download the uh, listing of these okay so avoid predatory journals and non good journals to be cited as part of your research paper never base your study or your research on not good journals all right thank okay. you very much sir i'm uh, sorry just a follow up question Uh, sure. Since that we are now dealing actually with the online, um, we cannot go to the library. We cannot go to the universities as of the moment to actually find some research. We could deal with the online thing, and there are also some websites. How can we use website in terms of references? Are we gonna follow the same format? Just what you did, or are we going to include also the www dot something website? Oh, the website uh, to cite a website in research paper, is it? Uh, are you asking about how to cite a research paper? How to cite a website in research paper? Yes, sir. How are we going to? Okay. How are we going to okay, write? I will demonstrate that to you. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay. So let's pick up any example. In fact, I already have lots of them. Um, what I have done is I've created one only for these web pages, one folder for web pages. Okay, uh, which part of the country are you from? Are you, are you from India or abroad? I am currently sir in the Philippines. Oh, in Philippines. Okay, so I don't know which one are the authentic websites and all that you use. Uh, for example, you got a central bank. in india it is known as an rbi reserve bank of india i think in philippines you should have some central bank okay so if you if you want to refer to that or say uh, something as say uh, ibef okay or any such secondary uh, data that you could that you could use for in order to cite them you could easily make use of it the way to first is to make an entry okay is um under the type choose it to be a web page okay till now i was demonstrating as journal article so wherever you want to cite a web page make sure that you choose this type to be a web page specify what is the title of that web page if you have the authors indicate them an author could be the organization or an individual for example if i have my own blog that i publish it then it becomes an individual if it is an organization which has published it that you are referring to indicate that to be the author the year okay the pages and all may not be relevant now what is critical here is the date when it was accessed this is very very critical as far as the apa referencing style is concerned because uh, see what this indicates is on 3rd of march i have accessed this various web pages can move from one location to the other if for example i am having a web server in my company i reorganize it um, so that could change hence the date access is very very critical number one second then the url has to be identified once this entry is done what you do is go and cite it uh, minus this i'll just quickly copy it so to cite it the method is same insert citation okay this is the report okay so say uh, for example what you say is uh, say the uh, industry something okay matrix was 50% so i am just i arbitrarily typing it so that's how you could cite it okay and in the references you would find it here okay I I I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Okay. Any other any other questions? 
If you're doing an empirical study versus systematic literature review versus meta-analysis, again, it will vary. Um, how, how many, say, if you're using a quantitative study with a conceptual model, the number of hypotheses you have, um, how extensive your studies, again, that would vary. So some journals have got limitations wherein you submit your manuscript with 6,000 words. In some, it could go up to 12,000 words. So number of references or citations again changes accordingly okay so typically in good journals it could be anything from 100 plus onwards okay if you're doing an slr it could be 150 uh, meta-analysis could be more again depending upon the number of studies that you are using as part of your uh, your research yeah. uh, yes sir one more question the h index by based at the citation i would like what is the difference between h index based on scopus base research base and google scholar i mean the author has many h index um, i will not go through this uh, journal metrics that's not the focus of this uh, workshop again we'll be diverting i know there will be lots of questions that's for another workshop <clears throat> these are all the metrics for the journals and the authors i cover in a different workshop altogether for that so um, I, I will park the question uh, as of now yeah uh, you feel free for this for today please feel free to ask any questions related to references citations mendeley <laughs> yeah any other questions no sir okay perfect okay i'll go through some uh, few more points and then probably i will open it up again for questions at the end if, if there are no questions then we would uh, we would wind up then okay so there are a few more things uh, i think initially also i explained i mentioned about um, which i'll be covering uh, is my is my screen visible? No, sir. No, oh, okay. Let me quickly share this. Uh, I hope it's visible now. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, perfect. So a couple of more things um, as part of this. Now, <clears throat> um, so once we have created the library items for example i've been using it for a few months or few years um, when we keep adding on various library items there could be a lot of duplicates in it so i can go into tools check for duplicates this will scan my complete library and then identify the number of items which are found to be duplicate so out of my three thousand something it has found 105 sets to be duplicate okay 105 sets corresponding to 218 duplicates that means there could be two or three as well in certain cases so that's why there it is not just 105 to 210 but it's 218 how do i find for them it gives all these listing if i click on this small you know uh, triangle what i have it gives me the individual entries about what I have. Now, um, then we need to do a, a decision whether we should merge them or retain any one of them. So as soon as duplicate is found, you should always look for this last column, which indicates the confidence. So if you find here, see the confidence is all 100%. That means the entries that you have, two or three entries are exactly a replica of each other. Whereas if I scroll down, okay, this confidence is much less it might be something around say 60 or 70 percent now the reason also you can identify if you uh, double click and open this further you will find in the first in the in the, in the yeah this is the first entry 
Okay. Whereas the second entry, okay, you'll find slight variation into this. So the author name, the title as well as the author name, it says when experience matters, building and the consumer's perspective. Whereas in the first scenario, okay, you'll find see the authors are uh, the way the authors are listed is again different. So you can then make a decision about which of the two you should use or should you be, uh, for example, in this case, it is expanded. Whereas in the other entry, it is something is missing into these names, what it has. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that has to be looked in for, for each entry, what it has. It could be in the title. It could be elsewhere as well about whatever we have. And then decide to merge them. Preferably always use the DOI whenever you want to, um, you know, look for these information, the ones which has got a lower confidence. With DUI, you can never make any mistake. Once you update with DUI, you can easily go ahead and merge. So now in order to merge this, what I simply need to do is select this particular one, first one, which has got 100% confidence. I just say confirm merge. So it is removed. The next one, which has got a PDF file, I just say confirm. Now this is also merged. The third, fourth like this, I can simply the ones which has got a high confidence, I can easily go ahead and merge them. So if I go back um, and look for, you know, again, for check to check the duplicates, uh, <coughs> based upon the merging that I have done, the numbers would go down. Yeah, now I got 100. So I've merged some of them. So accordingly, I can keep um, looking for the places where I find it to be duplicates and then merge them. So that's one. The next um, uh, tip is <clears throat> okay. For each of the entries that we have in the library, uh, I still keep getting that people are joining in. Can you restrict the people not to join in? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now in this, uh, when we have a lot of library items as part of your study, it's a good practice to take a backup of it. That means if anything happens to the library, you should have a backup. It's very, very easy to take a backup in this. So all the entries that we make here, it's all saved into the folder under the documents, a file by the name library.bib. If you look into the properties, it is giving 2603, 2022 at 1639. This is the last time when I made any changes or entries or deletion in my library. The time is 1640, whereas this is an entry till 1639. So it's as current as of now. It's a simple BIPTEX file. In order to take a backup of it, simply do a copy. I'll just copy the file. <clears throat> and I will paste it in a particular folder, say the same folder, which I created now, I just, I paste it here and uh, give it a name of today, 2203.26. Now this is the backup available. I can open it with a notepad in order to see the contents. So this is, Okay, all the entries that I have as part of my library is now saved in this particular BIPTEX file. So it's quite a huge file. If you look into this and uh, never ever make any changes unless you know what the syntax is and what it means. I will never recommend you to make any changes. I'm only sh showing it for demonstration purposes about the way the file is created. It's a huge file, but huge in the sense number of entries based upon the library item. Otherwise it's only what 5.35 MB in size. Uh, for the number of library items that I have as part of my is 3,392. So it's just, you know, 5.35. It's much easier to simply take a backup of it and store it in a place so that in case of any eventualities, um, for example, your system went down, uh, uh, though you have a, a replica of it in the, in the cloud, uh, if the replication happens between your corrupt version of your desktop and the cloud version, that will also get corrupted. So make sure that it's a good practice that you always take a backup of your library item. Imagine you're doing your PhD and um, you are into the final stage if something goes wrong and you will be in a soup. So 
um, I would always recommend you to take a backup of this, which is a which is a good practice. Okay, so that covers about um, the backup citations. Okay, all this we have covered for. Um, the other thing is, um, if you want to, for example, quickly make use of this um, as a BibTeX file. For example, I've got this particular entry. I just do a right click. I can copy it as a formatted citation or a BibTeX entry. I can use either of the approaches. The formatted citation is nothing but based upon the citation style that we have selected. So I'll show you both. I just say copy as a formatted one. So if I paste it here, that's what I have. Okay, so this is nothing but the citation style that is selected. Now, how do I know which citation style? It's, it shows off decision support systems. If I choose APA 7th edition, and I use the same file, copy as formatted citation, you see this will change. Okay, So it's exactly based upon the citation style, you could get the output with, with this by copy as <coughs> a formatted citation, quite useful scenarios. Or you could also copy it as a BibTeX file, either you could do for one for a, or multiple. For example, I choose all three, right click, copy as BibTeX entry. I can simply create a, a notepad and all these one, this is, okay, then comes, this is the second one and similarly the third one. So all these are now copied into this. So uh, when I want to send it across or share it with my co-authors, I can easily quickly do this for one or multiple files, or I can also do it for all the contents of a folder. Uh, so if I'm doing a co-authorship uh, for a particular study, I can have one subfolder created for that study and only those contents will then be shared with the uh, co-authors rather than sharing my complete library item. So it becomes very, very useful under this scenario. Okay. Um, I have covered import export, I have covered uh, delete and all synchronize. Okay, just make sure that um, you have the same user ID. Otherwise, uh, there will be a discrepancy between what you have on your desktop version versus the uh, cloud version. So what I mean by the cloud version is nothing but when you are using your web browser and going into Mendeley, the library item that you see here uh, should exactly be a replica of what you see in the desktop version. For that, you should have signed in with your user ID uh, so my user ID is rajashankaran at gmail.com and same is what I'm using here as well in order to log in. Okay, so these logins should exactly match between the two, otherwise they would be discrepancy. Okay, I think I have uh, covered all that I had planned for. Uh, I've covered export, I've covered everything that I had planned for. Uh, so I will open it up for questions. If there are any questions from the participants. Yes, sir. So how we do citation with writer's name and reference number? Do we need to set numbering manually or it get automatically through citation style format? Okay. If you're using a numbered uh, referencing style, it's done um, using that particular style. Let me quickly share my screen and show it to you. Okay. For example, this is what we had. Okay, the citation. This is currently the APA style. Okay. If I now change it to if I now change it to say the numbered style. Okay. So you'll find that all these are you know changed to numbered now. Okay, so you don't have to do anything specific into here. All these are taken care of within the in-text citation as well as at the in-text citation as well. So that's the advantage of using the Mendeley software. Okay, so it's done automatically when you change from one style to the other. Even when you are typing in anything, okay, for example, I add another uh, reference here. I say the research was quite... Uh, uh, Okay, I'm just typing something. Say if we want to cite something here. Now look into what happens. Okay, I choose the first one. So see, it, it went into number two. 
whatever number two was following it has become number three and this has become four and five as well as it gets added on based upon what i have selected now so in the numbered style you don't have to worry much about this it automatically does it based upon all the updates additions deletions that you perform now if for example i remove this number one okay the citation is no longer required say i i remove this i just need to refresh it the rest everything gets updated accordingly including what we have at the index citation okay so it's quite easy and simple in order to uh, navigate through within the document Uh, no, I think you're on mute, uh, uh, Kanika. Uh, yes, sir. So, sorry. Uh, someone more question. Sir, sure. it is possible to differentiate between theoretical and experimental research and the citation same in both? <laughs> now, it has nothing to do with uh, theoretical and experimental. The research is of various types, okay? So citation is uh, something that you are citing the work of other other authors and other work. It has nothing to do with theoretical experimental. It see the citation typically it's based upon the writing style adopted by the author. Whether you use an index citation with the within the index, there are only two things: parenthetical and, and the narrative citation. It has nothing to do with theoretical and experimental research. There are many such uh, research options that exist for, but these. Uh, citations remain similar um, uh, onto these. It's it's all about the writing style of an author, if I may put it this way. Yeah, that's why I've been emphasizing from the beginning. I could write in different ways. I could cite them in different ways. It has nothing to do with theoretical and experiment. It's all about what you want to cite from other other researchers. Thank you, sir. Uh, so no, no, sir. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, so uh, I think I am through with. Uh, if there are no questions, probably we are just on the. We just have a couple of more minutes. Probably I, I give a couple of more minutes back to you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir, for making our doubt clear. The workshop was really very amazing. I would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to you, sir, for gracing today's workshop, and your presence and your wise word helped magnifying our cause in best possible ways. I hope all the participants learn a lot from this workshop. I would really like to thank you, sir, for giving us your valuable time. And I'm also delighted to be a part of this workshop. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you so much for all the feedback and also from the participants. I hope you all make effective use of Mendeley as part of your research, as part of your thesis or dissertation or your or your PhD work. So do make best use of it and, and all the best for all of you. Okay, namaskar to everyone and, and bye. Yes, sir. Uh, good event never end in a world. They take only a pause and keep us awaiting for the next. All good things eventually end. I consider everyone as fortunate that they become a part of this workshop, which was full of knowledge and which make difficult to say goodbye. Now I request everyone to please fill the feedback form, which is provided in the chat box. And you can fill the feedback form within 24 hours, through which you all are able to get the e-certificate within five working days. And remember, don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and attach the screenshot of the same in the feedback form as a proof. And also tag us on Instagram like hashtag Dizzy Saksham along with the screenshot in your story. So kindly fill the form. And now everyone, please open their cameras. We need to take a screenshot. So everyone, please open their cameras. Thank you so much for cooperating. Again, thank you all for attending.
today's workshop and if you have additional question you can contact us by email and telephone we are happy to provide you additional support to you the end of one chapter is the beginning of next keep on reading the best is yet to come i kanika garg along with mandan neve your host for the day sign off on a cheerful note have a wonderful day thank you thank you bye everyone thank you sir